And um, again, I want to welcome all, welcome you all to, to this morning's session. Um, uh, basically, what's going to happen this morning is uh, Mort Moss Wild is going to do a, a, a 40, 45 minute uh, overview of the whole uh, forest uh, system. And then we'll have a short, uh, probably 10 minute break. And then I will do a in-depth demo uh, about um, actually going through the process of setting up an account in Forest, as well as uh, the process of uh, submitting a notification. Um, so that's the that's the plan for this morning. Um, this is a, a work in progress. Um, it's it's available for everyone to use now, but we are still um, tweaking the system, trying to improve it. Um, and we ask that if any of you um, in your process of using forest if you come across things that you have trouble with or uh, frustrations to to let us know um, so that we uh, can help you uh, and just to make the forest a better product for everyone to use um, yeah before i hand it over to mort i just want to um, i guess i didn't totally introduce myself but i'm the the project uh, leader for this uh, forest uh, project um, but uh, I'm just one of a, a team, and I wanted to thank the team now. Uh, they include Stephen Nicholas, Adam Cates, Greg Miller, George Harris, Joe Mintz, Don Mancius, Morton Mosswild, and Dan Jacobs, as well as we had some other uh, internal staff as well as external um, uh, people testing this um, in the initial phases of uh, getting this ready to go public. So uh, thank you all. And uh, right now I'm going to hand it over to Mort. Um, and uh, I hope this morning's uh, presentations are helpful to you. Thank you. So good morning, everybody. Can you hear me OK? Greg, can I can. you just? Yep. OK, very good. Yeah, and just uh, be sure to share your desktop when you go to your slide presentation more, just a reminder. That is what I'm about to do. And it is Let me know if you can see that OK. Yep. Yes. OK. Very good. So good morning, everyone. Um, again, my name is Mort Mosswild. I'm the field team leader for the field staff of the Forest Policy and Management Division of Maine Forest Service. Um, so uh, this is, uh, as Greg mentioned, a, uh, a work in progress and a big step. The way that we are uh, outlining this morning is essentially for me to give more of a conceptual overview, uh, some of the steps and features of Forest, uh, and then have Greg do uh, an actual demo where he's walking through the process. So in some ways it'll be repetitive, but I think that uh, you'll get the, the concepts first off, and then hopefully that'll become more um, understandable or more practical when Greg goes through the uh, the actual demo. So the purpose here for my part of the presentation is just to give a little bit of background to talk about some of the basic functions of forest sort of again in an overview sort of way to walk through the process but again just sort of conceptually and and fairly quickly uh we won't you won't see every nook and cranny of the of the program but you'll get a sense of uh you know how one steps through the process of submitting a notification and then we'll talk about timeline uh briefly greg has uh recorded past sessions. We've done this program several times over the last uh, couple months. We'll continue to, to hold more presentations like this. So you can look at the other presentations. You can repeat, you know, walk through this presentation again. And there are a lot of other resources on our website that uh, that Greg's provided. And certainly you can always contact us if you have questions. 
and we'll provide some of the links to getting more information toward the end of the of the presentation. So I think most folks will know that uh, forest operations notifications have been around a long time. They're essentially a product of the Forest Practices Act. They require landowners to notify Maine Forest Service when you have a timber harvest, uh, timber harvest operation. The process up till now has been paper based, so the paper forms are either sent out on request or sometimes people can find them at their town office. Um, they're filled out on paper. The folks, landowners and others are responsible for collecting signatures, submitting them to us along with a paper map, uh, sending them through the mail or in some cases dropping them off in person in Augusta, if, if you so choose. The data print, uh, entry process on our end is a manual process. So every one of those paper notifications, the data have to be entered into a database. Uh, the paperwork itself is filed. We have boxes and boxes and file drawer after file drawer of notifications. We send out a response letter again on paper and any changes or amendments are also made on paper. So effectively, we have uh, a 30 year history of of sending paper back and forth and documenting and archiving uh, uh, paperwork associated with notifications. As most of you know, uh, at the end of the process, there's also a requirement for landowners to submit a landowner report of what has happened uh, in the past year. Uh, in association with a particular timber harvest that's been notified. That is also a paper process. So we have 30 years of paper yeah, behind forest operations notification. A couple more things to, to note, as again, you most, most of you know, there's a six digit notification number and that is currently pre-printed on each paper form. So each paper form carries that six digit number already printed on it any of those forms that have not gotten used for whatever reason, they've ended up on a shelf somewhere or you know, stuck beneath a sack of paper somewhere, those notification numbers basically are just void. They, uh, they disappear and there have been lots and lots of notifications, pre-printed notifications forms that have never actually been used. Also, as you know, the notification number has to be posted at the principal yard or log landing or point of entrance to the harvest site. And the notification number is also used on uh, trip tickets and scale slips that help identify the harvest of origin. All of that is captured in what a few years ago was broken out as the chapter 26 rules that relate to forest operations notifications and those are all on our website. So we've been developing forest, forest online resource tool for over a year now. Uh, as Greg mentioned, we've had, had input and feedback from a number of people both within Maine Forest Service and across the industry. And as of January, we went into sort of production mode. So there is uh, an existing online opportunity to submit notifications. Uh, there's still some tweaks that are happening and some of them are quite minor. You'll probably not notice them at all. Uh, some of them will be a little bit more significant, mostly trying to accommodate some, some needs out there in the community. So as I said, we've done a number of, of uh, uh, run throughs of this presentation. We are still collecting feedback and are certainly more than happy to get any uh, suggestions or questions that that you may have. It's an online system. Uh, it replaces the current system as of January 21st. We are still accepting paper based notifications and will for uh, for some time now. So there is a transition period that that needs to happen. So what are some of the key features? Uh, I'll just mention a few and then you'll see these more directly as we walk through them. 
Uh, of course, it's an online web-based user interface. Uh, essentially, everything about it will now occur online. It does follow with some intention. It follows the current structure of notifications quite closely. We did that to uh, make it easier for people um, as far as understanding what's what's needed, what's required. So structurally, one walks through the process in a similar fashion as as before with the paper and also some of the language is actually uh, almost verbatim what you've seen in, in the current uh, paper based font. So many aspects of this should be familiar to you. Other key features are that users will be required to have an online account. This is very similar to any other online system for which you've probably established accounts before. Uh, so, but all users will have an online account. There will be, uh, there is a digital mapping uh, system. So essentially with mouse clicks, you will be able to map harvest areas, roads, stream crossings. You'll see that uh, in much more depth, but it is quite, quite slick. I think uh, most people will agree it's, it's very easy to use. The data entry itself is, is uh, fairly straightforward, step by step. There are annotations all throughout to inform you as to what information is needed or explain terms or other things that you might not be familiar with. But again, most of that is stuff that, uh, that people will already be familiar with. There is a process for signing funds, forest operations notifications digitally. We'll look through that. And once a notification is complete, uh, all parties who are associated with that notification will be notified automatically through email. So the entire process is, is an online electronic system. At the end of the process, the landowner, year, uh, landowner reports that are submitted at the end of the year, uh, you will receive uh, an automatic notification to complete those and ultimately those will go online as well. So just for starters, this is the home page. If you go to our um, our website and you want to begin forest, uh, begin using forest, this is the this is the web page. Most of my slides are based on a demo version, the actual um, production mode right now is extremely similar. I don't think you'll see more than a couple of very small differences. So I'm going to say uh, talk more about user functions, what you will actually do. And when I say users, I essentially mean anyone who is using the notification system. And so that means landowners, someone who might identify themselves as a designated agent, a licensed forester and a harvester. So any users will have the opportunity to take part or to use some of these, if not all of these functions. First off, you'll create an account and all parties to a notification must have an account connected to an email address. You will be able to sign into those accounts begin a new notification. We'll use the term notifier, so whoever is creating the notification um, will be able to, to start the new notification. To identify who you are as the notifier and who other parties connected to the FON are, uh, you can have multiple roles. So in some cases, the notifier will be uh, a landowner themselves, but in others it'll be a licensed forester or uh, who is acting as a designated agent or a harvester who's acting as a designated agent. You'll be able to digitally map the location and the activities. You can work on a draft notification, save it, come back to it later. Uh, once it's complete, you will certify. All users will certify the completed notification. Um, and anyone who is who's created an account can take a look at any of the notifications that they've already been working on, uh, including ones that are pending that have not yet been completed, any that are currently active 
or uh, any that have become inactive over, over the course of time. So you'll be able to look at all the notifications that have your name on them, um, basically on, on one, in one place. So creating a, an account uh, essentially gives you a, uh, a forest ID number. What you need essentially is a, a valid email address and create an account essentially using this uh, this portion of the of the home page. Just click on that button to create an account. Enter a certain amount of information, very similar to what you would do when putting in information on a on a paper form, and it will create an ID number for you, unique to your email address. And essentially, you'll be you know you'll have that account. Uh, on an ongoing basis. The, the same ID number will be used when you participate in any other notification, whether you're uh, actually submitting notifications yourself or whether you're simply signing off on a notification that somebody is, else is creating that, uh, that you have a role in as well. So you'll keep that same forest ID number. Another way to think of that forest ID number, if it's if it's helpful for anyone, if you're uh, if you're someone who uh, purchases a hunting or fishing or trapping license annually, you might think of the forest ID number kind of as uh, what's called a Moses number in the IFNW system. So the Moses number basically identifies you over time and regardless of what type of your license uh, of license you're you're getting every year so essentially the forest id number is is similar in that it's it's your particular identification in the system once you've created an account you simply sign in i'm showing portions of the uh, of the pages that you'll be working from and again this will become a little bit clearer later on with Greg doing the demo, but essentially you sign in. Once you've created an account, you sign in using this button in the upper right hand corner. Signing in is very similar to other sign ins online. Essentially, you're providing your email address and your password to sign in and you will arrive at this page that says welcome to Forest. So you're very quickly onto what we call the accounts, your accounts dashboard. <clears throat> that looks something like this. This again is is connected to you, you who have just signed in. So once you're here, you have a number of uh, options. One is that you can go directly to creating a new notification by clicking this button here. You can look at any pending notifications, one that ones that you've created but are not yet completed and accepted. So this you know, gives you a list of, of, uh, of pending notifications. The active notifications are ones that already uh, have been completed and are through the system. One of the things that you might want to notice, uh, and I realize the print is quite small here, but for pending notifications here, uh, this one does not yet have a notification number associated with it. So there's no notification shown for this pending pending notification, whereas this notification, which is active, does have a notification number. You'll also notice that the notifications now, uh, notification numbers now are seven digits. OK, so we've gone from six digits to seven digits. The whole process really rides on the fact that you won't be assigned a notification number until the notification is actually complete and signed by all parties. So that's why this pending notification uh, does not have a notification number yet. And this active notification does. <clears throat> One last thing to notice here is that you're once you're signed in, your forest user ID number, which is up here, uh, just kind of sits there in the background. It's not a number that you'll actually use uh, all the time, um, you'll just want to keep aware of it, uh, have it written down somewhere, make sure that you have it, 
um, because ultimately you'll end up having to share that with uh, other people that you're working with to create a notification. So who can actually create a notification? It can be uh, the landowner themselves, or it can be a designated agent. So the designated agent in, in many cases will also be the licensed forester and or the harvester. So when we use the term the notifier, basically we're talking about the landowner themselves or the designated agent who is uh, taking responsibility for entering all the data, filling out the, the form online, and, uh, and then it will be sent out automatically by the system for, for signature by all the other participants. When you do click on that button to create a new notification, you will go to the form itself and it'll walk you through several steps. So again, I'm just showing you portions of the page here, but this will be a little easier to see once we walk through the demo. But the notification itself consists of five sections. One is the overview information, then comes the mapping itself, activity details, what is actually being proposed to occur, who else the contacts or who else is involved with that notification, and then a summary page to sort of review it all and uh, move on to, yes, this is a complete notification, let's get everybody's signature on it. Notice that you can always save a draft uh, so you don't have to complete it all at one go and you can all you you step through the process by clicking this next button. So again, the process is is pretty straightforward. The whoever is the notifier, either the landowner or the designated agent is working their way through this process. One of the features of Forest is that each of these sections has to be completed in sequence before you can move on to the next. Uh, that's because the, the form, the electronic form, if you will, uh, is sensitive to what information you've already submitted. So, for example, you create the overview um, of uh, just the, the basics of, of the parcel, you do the mapping of the cert of the individual activities, and then you are asked questions about the activities themselves. So these questions in activity details will be responsive to what you've actually mapped and what you've described in the overview. It's a way to prevent you from being presented with a whole bunch of questions that may not be relevant to what you were actually proposing. So this is sequential, going down through, However, you can always move back to edit previous sections and the subsequent sections will will respond to whatever changes you make and adjust accordingly. So there's always the possibility to move back and then click next again to, to move ahead. The overview page looks a little bit like this, or at least a section of it looks like this. Uh, the first question is, who, who are you as the notifier? The, dem, the, the examples that I'm showing you are ones that I've created, and so these are just examples. Certainly, you might be in different situations and have different roles. In this case, I've identified the notification role that I have here by clicking the button that says I am the landowner's designated agent, and it's a little cut off to the side, but essentially I've also clicked that says I am the licensed forester for this notification. So I as the notifier am the designated agent who is the licensed forester in this in this case. The operation schedule here is fairly straightforward. Uh, the start and end date are shown. It's a maximum of two years as has always been the case. Uh, and then there are property details that you enter as far as which town you're in, what is the nearest road, what is the uh, parcel acreage. Just very basic 
overview information. The mapping feature again is is uh, quite slick. I think most people will agree that it's it's very straightforward. So because you've entered a particular town or township in property details in the overview just prior, uh, the map will actually center the itself on the town that you've selected. So you don't have to go hunting all over the state to find uh, the proper town. It'll give you an option to choose as your base map the topo feature, which looks like this that I'm showing you right off the bat. Um, or to select an aerial image. You can zoom in or zoom out uh, pretty much as far as you want using some of these buttons off to the side. And again, these are very similar to any other kind of mapping feature that, that you may have used, whether it's Google, Google Maps or any kind of mapping software. So the aerial photo looks a little bit like this. Um, it'll also show you uh, the statewide standards and LUPSI subdistricts. So if you're working in a statewide standards town, for m most of you that's familiar, but essentially any of the organized towns that have adopted Maine Forest Service rules for water quality for shoreland areas, those zones will show up on the map. The same is true for unorganized towns, the LUPSI subdistricts will be shown. The only things that will not be shown are the towns those organized towns that are still under their own shoreland zoning ordinance, um, those towns, we don't have the data for all of those shoreland zones and consequently they won't be shown. This map that I have up here is, a, is kind of a perfect example. What I'm showing you is a harvest area that has been mapped in a particular town. This is the town line. So the town that I'm with that I'm mapping in is a shoreland zoning town. They have their own shoreland zones and consequently there are no shoreland zones shown. On the other side of this town line, which I just happen to be close enough to a town line to be able to see it, but this town adjacent has a streamside area shown here in connection with a with a stream in that town. So had we been working in this town over here, we would already see all the the shoreland zone, uh, shoreland uh, areas uh, associated. We don't know from this unorg this organized town that's under shoreland zone, and we don't know whether there are any kind of water bodies that have uh, shoreland zones uh, under the town ordinance. You still have to look those up yourselves. The mapping itself, again, I think is is quite straightforward. It's a series of mouse clicks to digitize whatever areas you're trying to show. And so for harvest areas, uh, we digitize polygons with multiple clicks, at least three clicks, but as many as you want, really. Uh, for any kind of road construction, those are digitized as lines against, again, just multiple clicks. And water crossings, to indicate a water crossing, it's just click with a, a single point. With those uh, features that as you map them, uh, some information is immediately supplied to you. For example, there's a built-in acreage calculator that shows you how big an area you've just digitized, um, also shows you how long your road segment is, uh, and there are also places for you to identify what kind of, what kind of roads and water crossings are you, are you mapping. You can map multiple locations in the same town, multiple harvest areas, multiple roads or crossings. You can edit them, you can delete them, you can change your mind. Essentially, you can uh, you know, work with this map uh, as long as you need to to create the final product. So again, here's uh, that same example that I was showing you. What I've done here is I've just mapped two features. Once I map them, essentially they, they show up uh, in the the screen on the screen down below as activities. So if I wanted to draw a harvest area, as I've already done here, I just click on harvest, uh, allows me to create a new polygon. This is the polygon that I've created for, for my harvest area. It's shown down here as activity ID one. It's a harvest and 
forest automatically calculates that as being an area of 20.1 acres. Um, if I needed to, I could delete that and start over, but for now that's what I'm showing as my harvest activity area. I've also clicked on uh, water crossing to create a, to show a water crossing in the middle of my uh, harvest area. And that shows up down here and I've indicated that water crossing as a permanent water crossing uh, for a skid trail. So I could have said that's a, just a temporary crossing or I could have said that it's for uh, a, a road um, or I could delete it and uh, you know, map a map a crossing somewhere else. If I wanted to map a road, this is the sort of information that you would get pretty much any time that you start to draw a feature. But if I click on I want to map a road, uh, I am, get a uh, informational text here that describes how to do it um, to essentially click on the map to draw points to essentially connect the dots for that road to double click to stop drawing um, to adjust. You can drag and drop points. Uh, Greg will go through this more in the demo itself uh, and you'll get a better better look at how this actually works. Again, just notice that this road that I've drawn in here uh, is automatically calculated as 410 feet. Once I've finished my map, I go to activity details. And again, the questions that I'm asked are based only on the activities that I've actually drawn. So I can, I don't have, I'm not confronted with any questions or at least not with very many questions that are unrelated to the activities that I've that I've drawn. Um, there are a few internal checks that uh, will occur with the activity details. One of them is that the harvest size has to be less than the parcel size that you put in the overview page. So you can't uh, draw a harvest area of 400 acres when the parcel that you've identified is just 70 acres, for example. There are questions about change of land use, just as there have been on the paper notification. Now, uh, rather than just a blank to, to write in, there's a drop down box with several different categories, eight or nine categories for you to choose from. So you don't have to, you just choose the one that most closely applies to the activity that the change of land use uh, will be for, whether it's agriculture, whether it's uh, utilities, whether it's uh, some kind of residential or commercial development. The road construction questions only display if you actually mapped new roads and the water crossing questions only display if you mapped a water crossing. You can't move from this page until you've made uh, until you've answered all the questions and they're consistent, at least in that uh, degree to the, the the areas that you've that you've actually mapped. So in practice, this looks a little bit like this. Uh, the harvest activities, how many acres do you anticipate harvesting? And again, I apologize. I realize this text is very small, but the questions that you're asked are almost verbatim the uh, the same questions as from the paper notification. So for example, is the land that you intend to harvest taxed under the main tree growth tax law? Yes or no. Uh, will the land use change from growing forest products within two years? Yes or no. If you answered yes to this question, you'd immediately get that drop down box that says, OK, identify what those what area, how many acres will be changed and what the land uses are. So all of these questions really are almost exactly what you would have seen on the paper notification. Moving on from there, you get to the contacts page, and this is the opportunity for you as the notifier, either the landowner or the designated agent, to add other parties to the notification. In order to add someone to the notification, you have to have their at least their last name and their forest ID number. So you cannot simply create a notification uh, and complete it without having communicated with people ahead of time. And, you know, whether that's over the phone or in person or whatever, you have to have their last name and their forest ID number. So you, you'll have planned out 
in advance. Yes, I'm creating this notification. Give me your give me your forest ID number so that I can enter it into the system and then you'll have the opportunity to sign it electronically. So essentially this is a way to protect people from having all of their information out in public where um, you know this prevents people from adding your name uh, to a notification if in fact you haven't already shared your forest ID number with them. Uh, so uh, part of the message here is you might want to be a little a little careful, a little a little circumspect about whom you share your forest ID number with. Uh, if you don't want to be added to a notification um, without your knowledge or consent, you know, don't don't give out your forest ID number to everybody. There will if if that did happen, if someone was able to obtain your ID number and put you on a notification that you either didn't agree with or didn't have any connection to, you do still have the opportunity to decline to participate or decline to sign a notification. So um, you're not going to be automatically connected to a notification, even if that does happen. So again, in practice, that looks a little bit like this. So again, in this example, I, as the designated agent and licensed forester, uh, I need to have my landowner uh, with an account uh, who's given me their last name and their forest ID number in order to be able to add them to this notification. So in this case, uh, the landowner that I'm working with is Greg Lord and I've entered their forest ID number. I click on find landowner. Um, so I enter the, num the name here, the forest ID number there and find landowner essentially locates the account connected to that and pre-fills the rest of the information. I can remove that landowner if I want to, you know, name a different landowner or if I've messed up or something like that. Um, and then there are just a couple simple questions as to the, the nature of that landowner, what their ownership size um, and ownership type is. Then I get to the designated agent information. And here, because I've already identified myself as the designated agent, it's it's pre-filled and the, the information is already there. Similar uh, or, or in by contrast, I need to enter the harvester name. So here's where again, I need to enter their last name, but I also need to enter their forest ID number. So uh, once I've done that, I can click on find the harvester operator and it'll uh, pre-fill with uh, the account that it's that uh, that that's uh, connected to. So once I have all of the contacts entered into the system, I go to the summary and certification page. Essentially, this has uh, two two functions or two two processes going on. One is that I, as the notifier, the person who filled out this notification, confirms that all the information is actually correct. So each section that I, as I walk through the information, the summary information, uh, each section will have a checkbox that uh, I need to check to say, yes, this is correct. Um, the information is, is uh, as, as I had intended it. Uh, it also requires me as the notifier to acknowledge certain notices that are generated automatically. We'll talk about those in a minute. And it'll also ask me, ask me to confirm some of the additional actions that might be recommended or, or required. Um, just to acknowledge again that uh, that I've understood what what the system is telling me. Once I've confirmed all that information, I as the notifier will certify this notification. I'll say, yep, this is what I intended and it's ready to go off to the other parties. So as once I certify as the notifier, other parties to the notification will automatically get an email asking them to also certify this notification. We'll look at that process briefly. Um, once that's happened, once all the parties have been certified, have certified the notification electronically, the notification is complete. And at that point, the seven digit forest uh, operations notification or FON number gets generated and distributed to all parties. So just to take a brief look at that, um, here's the summary information. It's showing me 
uh, the contacts, who's involved, who's the landowner, who's the agent. Um, one thing to notice here is that I'm still looking at this as a draft notification. So it's still in draft form and I as the notifier could still go back um, to any of the previous sections and correct information or change information or anything like that. Um, but if the information is correct, um, as here, this is showing me what I've entered as far as the start date and town that it's in and acreage and so forth. If all that is correct, then I need to confirm that it's correct. This is one of the changes that's in the production mode. Uh, there's still a checkbox for this instead of this language where it says Mark has read. I think the language now reads um, I I'm confirming or I acknowledge and confirm that this information is correct. So this is just your um, opportunity, your requirement to read through this and confirm that it is in fact as you had intended it. I mentioned before that there are some reminders that automatically arrive uh, based on what you've presented in the or what you've proposed in the notification. So here's some just some general reminders, you know, make sure you still check with the town or municipality about local ordinances. That's sort of a standard recommendation that we have. Be familiar with all the rules. Don't rely on the notification to tell you everything that you need to know about the harvest um, and the, you know, whatever requirements are connected to it. And, you know, always good planning is is uh, is uh, good advice in this case for this notification there are no important reminders connected to the harvest uh, important reminders could be related to um, shoreland areas that i may be working in or uh, certain product protection sub districts or things like that uh, there are no road construction reminders there's nothing special about the the road that i've uh, sketched in there However, there is one reminder related to the water crossing, which is that if it's a permanent water crossing in an organized town, uh, I'm going to need a permit by rule, and that's going to be required and approved prior to, to installation. Now, in this case, the permit by rule process is a completely separate process. So for us, the system here is not, is not uh, allowing is not going to allow me to actually complete the permit by rule. It's just telling me don't forget to, to do this. Um, you'll get your forest operations notification number and it'll be an approved forest operations notification, but this other requirement still applies. Once I've gone through that summary page and clicked all the boxes, checked all the boxes, uh, acknowledged and confirmed everything's correct, I'll get a an opportunity to certify that that information is is correct. Notice here this last button has not yet been uh, checked and so this certify button is not active yet. I can't certify this notification until I've gone through and checked all of the, the boxes for each section. And so that would look something like this where um, I've checked on the overview page, I've clicked clicked on the, the map to sort of to confirm that, confirmed activity details, the contact information um, for Maine Forest Service that's supplied, and all of those reminders. And now this box is live. I can actually certify this notification. Once I've clicked that, I get one last opportunity to review and also to acknowledge, OK, so I've identified myself as de designated agent and licensed forester, and I'm certifying as such that all questions are correct to the best of my knowledge. As a designated agent, I understand that that entails a specific role and responsibilities for the operation. And I understand that the notification itself doesn't, doesn't get completed, doesn't get submitted to Maine Forest Service until all parties have reviewed have also reviewed and, and certified their acceptance and that's when the notification gets generated so until i check all these boxes this acknowledge and certify uh, button is not live it's important for the notifiers to understand that the this is kind of your last opportunity to go back and edit things because once you've acknowledged and certified your participation um, the the information 
uh, gets frozen essentially so that all the parties who are certifying the notification are certifying the exact same information. So we wouldn't want people to go back and edit after someone else has has certified and signed off on, on the notification. So this is kind of your last chance to go by, back and, and make some edits. So checking all those boxes, clicking acknowledge and certified takes you here. And it basically tells you, you've certified the notification and the other contacts have been notified. This is pretty much an immediate process. So once you've certified, everybody else gets an email that says the notification is ready for certification. You as the notifier can still view the summary information, but you can no longer edit it. So here you just click OK. And you'll get this notif notice that says, this notification is now pending certification. You can still withdraw it if you want to start over entirely, or if you want to say, well, you know, actually, I don't want to participate in this notification after all. You can still withdraw it. The information doesn't disappear. It just means that you're going back into draft status and nobody else will be able to, to certify it until you once again uh, confirm it. So essentially, this is now out in the response the, it has become the responsibility of other people to certify their participation. The signing, if you are not the notifier, the signing of a notification is a very similar uh, process to the last bit that we've just described. So once the notification is complete, everybody who's been identified on that notification will get an email link to that notification. They'll work through the confirmations, essentially, uh, be able to review all the information that the notifier submitted without changing it, and essentially be able to then click a button uh, to sign the notification. And once that's happened, all parties identified on the notification have signed off. Um, Forrest uh, automatically completes the notification and sends out that seven digit notification number. Uh, the system also allows you to print a posting sheet uh, with that notification number directly from, from the software. The email itself, I think the text has changed a little bit, but this is basically what uh, the sort of thing that you would get. If you didn't create this notification, you would get a, um, an email like this that says um, a notification has been created by so-and-so uh, using Forest Online resource tool and it's pending certification. So it's your, you've been identified as a participant and need to go to the system to, to acknowledge and certify it. And essentially you get a live link. I think this is made a little bit more obvious now, but essentially this is a live link that you can click on to go directly to the, the system and walk through the, the summary and uh, click to acknowledge your your certification of it. All of this that I've described, I know this is pretty brief, but all of this is stuff that Greg will go through uh, in his demo. <clears throat> so the timeline, as I've noted, Forest is now live and available. It's been up since January 1st. There are people who are actively submitting new notifications using Forest, and I think we're almost up into uh, triple digits as far as the number of notifications that have come in. We are still accepting uh, paper-based notifications. As I've noted, there, um, there is a transition period that we're working our way through as we make sure that we've got all the bugs worked out of uh, Forest and uh, create a few add-ons that uh, I think Greg might, might mention. Um, but anything that's uh, currently on paper uh, has been submitted will remain valid throughout its original harvest period. And anything that we're receiving right now on paper will also continue to be valid um, until, you know, until essentially the two years are up for that, for those notifications. So we are still taking, uh, taking notifications and we've uh, at least initially set a March 31st deadline to have the uh, the transition complete to 
Forest Online, and as, as we'll discuss, um, that is sort of under review. So uh, this is the end of my part of the presentation. I think we'll take a few moments for questions and uh, take that break that Greg was describing. Essentially, you can always call us if you have questions. You can send an email to Forest Info. Um, there have been, as, as we've mentioned, a number of questions that have already come in, some good discussions, actually some, some very good suggestions that we've taken. Um, we have a frequently asked questions page that's on our web page, uh, as well as those how to videos and um, the past presentations themselves. Um, so you can uh, you can find that on our website and many of those questions are, are addressed. Um, and uh, as I said, we've been getting good questions, some of the same questions and uh, happy to, to continue to hear what people's experiences, what questions they have, um, what challenges you're facing. So I'm going to stop there and um, I hope that is helpful. Thank you, Thank Mark. You, Mark. Uh, I see a couple of people have their hands up. Uh, Dave Harvey. Uh, do you have a question? Just come off mute. And, and... Yes, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, question, um, so if the harvester is required, a harvester uh, has to have a um, ID and in the system. Um, if they're working with a landowner, um, can they then um, be the designated agent as well or would they just would the form just have a landowner and a harvester on it it depends on who the notifier is so in this case the harvester can't be the notifier unless they've identified themselves also as a designated agent so a notifier has to be either the landowner or the designated agent if the harvester um, wants to, if the landowner wants to create the notification and identify the harvester, that's fine. The harvester just needs to go through it and sign it at the end. If the harvester is actually taking part as the notifier, um, then they also have to be identified as the designated agent. Does that make sense, Dave? Well, I, I think that, I think, yes, it sounds like they have to be the designated agent, but you also have to list the harvester on the form. So, you'd have to have two IDs. Well, you can play multiple roles. So in this instance, if the landowner, so nobody needs to have two IDs. If you're playing more than one role on a notification, just as on paper, if you are the designated agent and the harvester, you just enter your, you just check the box that says I'm the designated agent and I'm the harvester. Um, and the the same ID number uh, okay. covers you for both roles. So the same would be true of a licensed forester. If the licensed forester is also the designated agent, um, they basically are using their same that same account um, to 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 play both roles on the notification. And will the so the um, year end reporting will go to the designated agent? I believe so. I'll let Greg answer that question. Yeah, you'll, uh, you'll see it towards the end of my part. Um, they'll, I believe it's the designated agent or the notifier will um, have the opportunity to complete the landowner report within Forest. Thank you. Uh, David, uh, I see your hands up. Do you have a question or comment? Uh, I have a question in regards to the to the forest mapping. Is it possible to upload the spatial data for your harvest unit, or just to the best of your ability, you you draw it, draw the polygon on within the mapping tool? Yeah. So right now, um, the way it works is you would draw it 
on the map to the best of your ability. Uh, we do have on our list of things to add um, soon is the ability to upload um, shape files. Uh, it's just not in there yet, but the intent is to, you know, with the understanding that there are people out there that have their own GIS and uh, the ability to make maps that we would accommodate them um, to upload their own. Thank you. <clears throat> How about um, tax maps? Will that be a layer that you could see on the mapping? We've uh, kind of steered away from that only because uh, not uh, every town is uh, up to date with their tax maps, and um, those are used for you know you know assessing and um, it, it's uh, you know and, and Greg Miller or more could jump in and, and provide more insight. But the plan is right now is to not include the tax maps. Yeah, a lot of the tax information the state received at once and it has been updated, so it hasn't changed in 10 or more years. So it's it's really not a, a stable database that we would like to use to, to be able to show. The quality of those maps is also pretty, pretty variable. So uh, it's it's unfortunate, but we wouldn't want someone to be identifying their harvest area or a parcel based on based on a, on a tax map that's actually pretty pretty inaccurate it has caused all kinds of problems uh, especially in the um, organized parts of the state <clears throat> 